Hey guys, today I want to show you 40 new farms that you can make in 1.19. Due to a lack of fireflies and birch forest, 1.19 has a little bit of a reputation of not having enough content. But if you actually look at it, especially if you're interested in farming, there's a lot to play with. Okay, let's take a look at our first one. You can make a mud farm in 1.19. And the mud is really a perfect example how there's actually a lot of depths to a lot of features in 1.19. So you can either make a simple mud farming setup like this one here, or you could also make a really complicated one like the one here on top that adds a bit more automation to the process. But let's take a look at the simple one first. So in order to get mud, you need to apply a water bottle on a dirt block. This can be done by either a dispenser or by a player. Simple AFK farming setup would look like this one here. You would just hold down right and left mouse button, place dirt, it gets turned into mud, and then you mine with the shovel and it get, gets collected here at the bottom. But it's also possible to automate the whole process and get mud block items without the player doing anything. But a lot more steps are involved in order to achieve that. So it actually starts by generating stone here, which we push into the setup. Next step, we bone meal a moss block down here, which turns the stone on top into moss blocks as well. And then there's a chance that azalea bushes would generate. The next step, we would bone meal those bushes, which turns them into a tree. And the block below actually gets turned into dirt. So it used to be stone, but converted into moss, and then the rooted dirt block next. So all those rooted dirt blocks are pushed out in front of a water dispenser here. And we turn yeah, all of those blocks into mud and push it further into a TNT blast chamber. So every 240 blocks that are incoming, we dispense a TNT, blow up the mud blocks, and then you have a water collection system that would yeah, feed your storage with mud blocks. And in addition to 1.19, where the frog light blocks, they come in three different colors. We have a new light source in the game, and those blocks are also farmable. Frog light farms are rather simple, but unfortunately a little bit tedious because it requires you to move frogs to your farm. So here's how it works. Depending on the color of the frog, a tiny magma cube that gets eaten is processed into a different type of frog light block. And we just have a hopper minecart picking those up from below. So a simple frog light farm setup could look like this. You have a magma cube spawner in a bastion, all the large and medium sized magma cubes that would drop down are frozen by the powder snow here and the tiny ones couldn't reach there so they're not killed by it. Um, yeah, The big ones are broken up into smaller ones and then you just have the frogs roaming around eating all the tiny magma cubes. But there's also different tiers to frog light farms. While you're only getting around 2000 frog light blocks per hour of the magma cube spawner farm, you could also go large scale and get around 140,000 with this type of farm. So this would actually be a one player setup. You got one player AFKing in the nether above a basalt delta biome with a lot of portals. You can actually quickly take a look at that. So this is just a quintuple layered 32 per 32 portal. The AFK spot would be above the farm. So as long as you build everything within the three by three chunks around the portal. So in this area here, yeah, the farm would work fine for single player because the magma cubes going through the portal will actually cause this area to be loaded all the time. Okay, so then we just got 160 frogs eating all the tiny magma cubes and again hopper minecarts picking up the items. Of course you also need frogs for your frog light farm, so you can find frogs either in a new mangrove swamp biome or in the old swamp biomes. Now I'm somebody that likes to automate pretty much everything, but I think making some kind of frog farm is not really necessary. So the drop itself doesn't drop anything. You only need a limited amount of frogs for your frog light farm and then you're pretty much good. So making some kind of farm is probably overkill. So doing it manually is more than enough. Since it still falls in the farming category, I'm just gonna show you how you can get more frogs. So need a pair of two and then breed them with slime balls. The love hearts, then XP. And then you would go towards the next body of water and lay the frog spawn. After a while, the tadpoles are hatching, and then you can collect those with a water bucket. Okay, then you can bring them to different biomes. So depending on the type of biome where the uh, tadpoles turn into a frog, the frog has a different color. So there's three different types, moderate, climate, warm, and cold. So the ideal location for a frog farming setup would be an area where you have a cold, moderate forest and a warm biome next to each other and then maybe make three or four pools 
they just put your tadpoles in. So you could maybe have one extra pool where you breed new tadpoles and then yeah, just deposit them in there. Just make sure it doesn't freeze, of course, and wait for them to grow up and turn into frogs. So as you can see, if you only care about efficiency and getting the job done, manual setup for this is probably sufficient, but if you want to go full crazy, you can also make an automatic AFK frog farming setup where the tadpoles are transported to different biomes. But for your, your one batch of frogs that you need for a froglet farm, it's probably a lot of effort. And the same pretty much can be said for a lay breeding. So instead of making some kind of AFK a lay breeding setup, it's probably best to just bring one alay where you actually need them and then you can start breeding them. Um, yeah, so you can just attach them maybe with leads to a fence post to keep them within the area of the jukebox and then thanks to ex exponential growth it shouldn't take long until you get as much as you need where you need them. In case you missed it, the cooldown for the alay breeding also has been reduced to 5 minutes from 2.5 minutes but even yeah, with that mechanic it's no problem at all to get enough of those guys. There's another simple breeding based farm you can make. So in order to get those new goat horns, you need to cause uh, goats to lose their horns. So the easiest way is to make a little enclosure out of stone blocks and put some armor stints in there. So depending on the type of goat, yeah, the, um, the screaming goat's a bit more aggressive. They will now attack those armor stints, kind of ram into the stone blocks and lose their horns. So you can see a difference here. Uh, this guy still has two of his horns. Most of the others already lost. There's. Let's take a look at the pen with the normal goats. Yeah, they almost all lost their horns as well. And uh, there's eight different horns you can get. If you have normal goats, basically a non-screaming variant, you can get Seek, Ponder, Feel and Sing. And from the screaming goats you can get the other four, which would be Admire, Call, Dream and Yearn. It's also definitely a good idea to put some blocks on top so the goats can't jump out and they would cause a little less lag. Um, I wouldn't recommend to put honey or mud blocks below them so you would be able to collect the items just with some hoppers because then for me they didn't attack the armor stands anymore. So they apparently need to stand on just some solid full blocks. In case you need a lot more goat horns for some reason you can still use the goats that lost their horns to breed and then cull them afterwards. You couldn't grow their horns back, of course. Let's move on. There's also a new tree type, the mangrove tree, which you can find in the mangrove swamps. And there's all kinds of blocks. So you can make slabs, planks, uh, fences, and the usual stuff out of it. So in case you want to build with those blocks, you need to chop down those trees. And of course, you can also make an automatic tree farm out of that. In order to do so, you need to collect those proper goose, which are also farmable. More about that later. And then you can just um, yeah, bone meal them there's sufficient space around and it would grow into one of those trees. You can also automatically farm those proper goose. So the way it works, you only need to select to get some of those mangrove leaves. Then you can bone mill them and then you get a you know, stage one proper ghoul and bone mill that until it's fully grown and then harvested. So an automatic farm could look like this. You have top dispensers uh, for the leaves and then for the proper goose cells, bottom dispensers. Then you just use pistons to harvest them and hope a minecart would collect. So then you can use those proper ghouls to grow those mangrove trees. And you can even make an automatic mangrove lock and mangrove roots farm out of this. But this is rather complicated. So made a working farm during the snapshots. Um, there's definitely ways to make this a bit simpler. This was just the first working prototype. But because of this irregular shape of the mangrove tree, uh, it got Pretty tricky. There's a lot of te technical issues with it. A lot of flying machines solved this for me, but there's also other approaches that could be used. But in general, I think for most players that are super into farms, I think just chopping them down is probably the best approach. Okay, uh, flying machines are about done. So, AFK player would then stand here, plant those proper ghouls, and we grow them into a tree. And there we get a couple locks out of this. Now we just launch the flying machines again and push them into the TNT blast chamber. So those mangrove root blocks you get can also be crafted into muddy mangrove roots blocks. You just need to combine the roots and the mud in a crafting table to get those. There's technically also an automatic way to get those. So in case you would replace the dirt here with mud um, and have another layer of dirt below, then the mangrove tree growing could convert some of the mud into the muddy mangrove roots block. 
So technically, you could make a fully automatic mud farm that then replaces some of the muddy mangrove roots blocks again. Um, and this way, just by having a player AFKing there and also blowing up those type of blocks, somehow you could make a you know, semi-automatic muddy mangrove roots blocks farm. This is definitely one of the most challenging farms in the game. There's little benefit of doing it because you can just use the crafting recipe instead, but it's something you could do. It's kind of funny, the new mob, the Warden, can also be farmed and it's super simple. So all you need is basically one of those Shriekers that would generate naturally, put a player on top and then have some setup to flush the Warden somewhere out of reach of the Shrieker, so within 24 blocks a Warden would prevent other Wardens from spawning and then kill them somehow. So entry cramming which we're using here is a pretty good approach. But is there even a point farming a Warden? Well, at first there actually wasn't at all. So in the beginning the Warden only dropped 5 XP, but now they also drop those Skulk Catalyst blocks, which you need for a Skulk block farm, for example, but usually you don't need more than a handful. Um, but if you need them for decoration of some kind of project, then maybe a Warden farm would make sense. All right, so let's move on and let's talk about the new Skulk block mechanics. So there's a lot of new farms we can yeah, make with those. For example, a fully automatic XP farm, which is pretty cool. You could already do it to a certain extent. For example, you could use pet wolves to kill skeletons, which would drop XP, so you wouldn't need to swing your sword yourself. Or also with the zombified picklin mechanic, you can also make a yeah, player interaction-less XP farm. Uh, it was already announced that the zombie fight pick in farm concept will probably be fixed at some point and a lot of people thought that you can then use the skulk mechanics as a replacement so some people even expected 1.19 this will already be fixed and we wouldn't just need to switch to skulk but the zombie fight pick farm still works and right now the skulk block farms are just not as powerful so yeah, the hype died down about this quite a bit but let's take a look at it nevertheless because who knows maybe in the future something changes again and they will become a bit more relevant so yeah the cool thing is we're using the skull catalyst which is a warden drop but we can also just collect it uh, in a deep dark biome we can convert yeah mobs into xp uh usually so it only work for player kill actually it's not uh, directly converted in xp it's converted into a skulk charge first which gets sent um, to basalt blocks here and yeah, converts them into the skulk blocks. So you just have a basalt generator, skulk charge is incoming, converts the basalt blocks into skulk blocks. And if you blow those up using certain explosions only, a wizard works for example, the blocks would drop 1 XP each. So yeah, this farm would then produce Basalt, because not all of the blocks get reliably converted, and XP, which a player that could maybe just stand over here could then collect. Now, this farm is not as powerful as the zombified piglin farm, because there's always a... <laughs> all XP balls. Because there's always a limit how much XP a player can pick up, and that's one XP ball every two ticks, or 10 XP balls per second. Now here we only get the smallest type of XP balls that only contain one XP each. Uh, that means we can only get 36,000 XP per hour with this mechanic. For example, a zombie fire piglin farm yeah, allows you to get 150,000 or more. So yeah, almost five times as fast. Um, so yeah, putting all this effort into making a skulk block farm, in the end, only in a couple of cases might be the way to go. Usually the zombie fire pickling farm is still better. In general, every mob that gets killed and drops XP can also be converted into skulk blocks and then XP can be farmed automatically. This would exclude, for example, only baby animals or bats. They don't drop XP. Uh, so this allows you to make an XP farm out of pretty much every mob farm. This could be useful in certain circumstances. For example, in peaceful mode, you're really limited with um, yeah, automatic XP farms. Since there's no zombie fat piglins or skeletons that can be killed by wolves. So you could make uh, a chicken farm in order to turn stone into skulk and then blow those blocks up uh, with some playerlet TNT. So uh, the TNT out of the dispenser wouldn't work, but since a later snapshot, uh, TNT lit by a flame arrow shot by a player or by a player flint and steel would then also cause the skulk to drop XP. 
Unfortunately, this would don't exclude TNT duping, so getting uh, TNT in peaceful mode or getting gunpowder is another story, but yeah, there's always certain limitations with this skulk mechanic. In most cases, making an enderman farm in the end dimension is just simplest to get some mob to create a skulk charge, and you can now also use this for getting more skulk shriekers in skulk sensor. So if there's space above um, the skulk blocks and we didn't reach certain threshold of already existing sensors or shriekers, new ones would generate. Um, we would get 9 or 10 times more sensors than shriekers because they have a, a higher probability to generate. In order to farm those automatically, so we could just uh, stand on this honey block here. Let's go from left to right and farm those blocks. Okay, there's also a point getting the sensors and shriekers apart from uh, being useful in redstoning and this decoration. They're also pretty good ex resource, even better than the skulk block, which you can also farm. But uh, the point would be that you have a certain amount of shriekers with you, or sensors. And that's why we could just place them down and mine them quickly again with a standard hoe. Each sensor would then drop 5 XP, which is pretty decent. So this is definitely a really good alternative, we would say it's even better than buying XP bottles. Because you can bring those everywhere, they're easy to harvest, in case you quickly need to enchant something, it's definitely a viable option. But technically you can also do the same with the skull blocks, but they would only give you 1 XP instead of 5. It's also possible to make a farm just for getting those skulk blocks. So this would be one of the fastest ones here, where you can get up to 70,000 skulk blocks power. So you just need a player with a silk to show, mining all of the blocks, and then the farm would generate new ones. Um, so again, enderman farm, turning enderman into a skulk charge, uh, converting stone, this generated here on the side, into skulk blocks, and then pushing all of those blocks uh, with a lot of pistons to get them into the right shape in front of the player where they just mined. Um, since, well, getting XP this way is a really tedious process, I don't think it makes too much sense to make such a farm. Uh, this might change in the future. Mostly would make sense right now if you want to build with the skulk blocks, if in case you need some large scale decoration with it. Apart from that, yeah, not too much sense to make such a farm. There's one more thing that can also be found, but argue it's even less desirable. So the skulk veins here that would generate on the side of blocks that um, can't be converted into skulk can also be mined with silk touch. So let's check it out. Silk touch show. You can also get those. And then you can place them down later. Um, so those are purely decorative blocks. I haven't even bothered with it, but of course you could make a farm where you're mostly focused on getting a lot of skulk veins. Um, yeah, let me know if you actually plan to build something like that. Would be interested how many people need a lot of skull grains and what for. So I'm just gonna show you one more thing. So yeah, blocks that can't be converted would grow the skull grains on the side of skull charge. Can we see that? There we go. Let's continue our journey through the 1.19 farms. So the new mechanics allow for some really complex contraptions that are a lot of fun to develop, but also really convenient to use. You can automatically generate clay in 1.19. You can already do that uh, with the villager gifting farms, but you can also do it in a different way now. So remember our mud farm from the beginning of the video? So we had this in the beginning, we made stone, converted it into moss, converted it into rooted dirt, and then into mud. So we're basically here, you need to imagine the rest of the machine here in the beginning, just using a mob block right now in this world to get the rooted dirt. And then we can take the mud and run it through this converter here. So the new mechanic is that if you have mud blocks with uh, blocks below and then dripstone attached to it, there's a certain chance that this mud block will be converted into clay. So the idea is that the water is sucked out of the mud then only the clay is left over. So here we got basically a, a slow converter, so it's random tick based, we just need to wait it out until it happens. Uh, we got a continuous process, so we just push in new blocks all the time from the back and then push everything forward. So we split up this line of blocks, um, I think 192 times, so we have less moving blocks at a time. So this is basically just makes it back friendly to split all the blocks up. And then in the end we merge everything again and have this clay block stream output. 
So basically it moves at the same speed as the input. Okay, and then of course we use some TNT to blow up the clay blocks. Drops clay balls, which you can well, well craft into clay blocks again, or put them in a furnace, get bricks, you can also get terracotta out of this, clay terracotta, um, and so on. So some really complex farms that you can make with this new mechanic. So far I've only shown you how you can farm the new items, but some of the new 1.19 mechanics also enabled us to upgrade a lot of the older farms. So the feature that is really revolutionary in that case is the hopper minecart dropping itself. So previously in older versions, 18 and lower, if you would break the minecart, it would drop a minecart and a hopper, which can't be reassembled automatically into hopper minecart again. So you had to always keep your hopper minecarts out of a dispenser, for example. But now we can just yeah keep them in a dispenser and then dispense them whenever we need this. So here is a sugarcane farm that is based on this new mechanic using yeah distributor for the hopper minecarts and send them on top of a flying machine. So they currently just put you know, with this one white tile of a setup on a detector rail each, then get released, drop down, and then flying machine is launched and yeah, all the sugarcane items are perfectly picked up by this. And at the end of the sugarcane farm, you can then just drop all the minecarts again and use one of the new unloaders to retrieve the items. So this has two benefits. Um, mostly it's a lot lag friendlier and also just makes for a lot of fun farms. Just <laughs> a lot of fun to watch this farm running. Here we can see the new unloader. We just break the minecart and the items would land up here and you can just pick up the sugarcane. And yeah, with the hopper minecarts, you can update a lot of older farms, bamboo, etc., uh, certain vine farms. A lot of things can just benefit from those new mechanics. Furnace arrays, especially with the new chess boat as well. That was also added 1.19. It's also a pretty cool entity we can use now because it's just larger than a hopper minecart. So you could, for example, place it on top of nine hoppers at the same time and take items out of this. And one last thing, wither skeletons are able to spawn inside of portals in 1.19. So this allows us to make some really easy farms just by placing them on portals inside of the bounding box of a nether fortress. Okay, so we're at the end of the video. 1.19 definitely was plagued with some unpopular decisions, like the last minute decision to not add the fireflies or the birch forest, or recently also the addition of this new chat reporting feature that a lot of people, me included, not really looking forward to. Mostly because I'm scared what this could also entail, but apart from that, if you just look at the features, 1.19 definitely has a lot of new content, especially if you're interested in farming. There's also something I think for everybody. A lot of farms are quite simplistic, and there's also options to make some really complicated ones, which is totally not necessary to play the game. So if you think about this uh, clay or mud farm, you can always just get clay or mud by just farming it in the yeah, corresponding biome or make simpler farms like the mud or clay setup. Um, but if you want, you can automate the whole process, similar with the skull blocks. So really interesting things we can do there. Um, so I'd say 1.19, definitely in my opinion, wasn't worse than other updates. So yeah, for me, it was pretty good. Hope you enjoyed this video as well. Maybe you also have some ideas. Let me know in the comments. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.